to wrap up this chapter, um, I want to talk one more time just about this idea of bringing in pattern matching or even very simple literal string matching uh, to be able to increase what you can do in R and in these tidyverse functions. So we've used select before to pick out columns, and we've used things like mutate and rename to be able to work with different columns in, in a tidy data frame. But it turns out there are families of these functions that let you say, instead of exactly which column you want, it lets you match to columns that, that kind of match a certain part, uh, pattern. So we'll start with looking at ones like starts with, ends with, and contains. So what we can do with these is it allows us to kind of select things based on these patterns. So with the Titanic, we can load that data. And as a reminder, here's what the beginning of it looks like. So we can see, you can see all of these different column names that we have. We might wanna do something like, instead of just selecting P class, we might wanna select all of the columns that start with the letter P. So we can do the select, and then inside of that, if we wanted to just get P class, remember we would have done P class like this. So let's take a look at that. And you can see we just have the one. Instead of doing that, we could do starts, with and then do P. Now you can see that with us just typing that one thing, it's pulled out all the ones that start with the letter P. There's some other functions that work in a similar way, including ends with, where you say the character it ends with, and then also contains. And this contains lets you pull out um, patterns that are more than one letter long. The, the others do as well, but all of them will kind of like match those different areas. So we could look and see some of the patterns that we see. Um, so let's see. We could look at the things that have double S's in them. And we have an example here and then an example with, with passenger. Those are happening within. They're not happening right at the start or right at the end. This one happens at the end, but this one happens right at the start. So let's look at those two different examples. We'll start with ends with and have the two S's. So you see that only pulls out class, but then we can also do contains, and that'll pull out anything that's got that character anywhere in the, the, the name. So now it's including passenger as well. There are also functions that are called scoped variants that let us operate on a selection of variables. So it'll both kind of like pull it out if we're doing select, and then also let us run a function on that. You can identify these functions because they end with names like all, at, and if. And so they have these for select, they have them for mutate, they have them for rename. I think that some of these might, they might be superseding with other functions, but I think that these versions uh, should still work for, for quite a while. So here's an example, and we'll start with just doing the same idea we were doing before of pulling out with select certain columns. So in this case, we'll do select underscore at, and we need we can still do contains, but we need to wrap it in that vars statement now. So we'll do vars here, and we're changing this from select to select underscore at. So let's take a look at that. That's pulled the same thing. So, so far, it just seems like a more complex version of doing the starts with. But now what we can do is we can actually add on a function to make some change as we do that. So we'll specify that with the with the dot funds parameter, that argument. And then uh, maybe what we want to do here is do the string to lower. So change all of these so that the full column name is in lowercase. So you can see now it's pulled those out and it's done that transformation of changing them all to be in lowercase. So the slide's showing adding on that function part. Another way that you can use this is you can select things based on the, the type of data you have there. So we might look at the Titanic data set, the first few rows, and you can see we've got different types of data here. We've got factors, we've got whether they're saved as it or, or not right now, we've got this male, female that really could go in a factor. We've got character strings here and probably in this ticket information. We've certainly got some numeric data. So we might wanna pull out just the columns that match a certain data class. We can do that with this select if function and then we specify 
that, that kind of like logical expression. So is dot numeric will give a logical with true if something is numeric and false if it's not. So we can do select if, and then we just put is numeric as our function there. And now it's pulled out only the columns that have numeric data. Now, again, just like with the, the, um, the last version of this, we can do that dot funds and we could do something like change all of these uh, column names to lowercase. So this is an operation being conducted on all of the column names. So this is going through an example of doing that. And then here's an example of the usage using that generic code. So again, this won't run, it's just showing you where things go in this call. So for all of these functions, you'll put in the data frame that you want to work with. And then next, you need a predicate. This is something that's expressing the variables that we want to keep. So we did that with starts with, but we also did it with the vars and then and some of the contains. And then finally, you can put in the function that you want to apply to all of the column names that you've selected.